Today I'm going to be showing you how we can use Le Chatelier's principle to manipulate equilibrium reactions. Now many chemical reactions go to completion. Burning magnesium in oxygen is a very good example. The magnesium strip burns in a bright flash to form white powdery magnesium oxide. At no point does it seem that the magnesium oxide is trying to convert itself back into magnesium metal and oxygen. But many chemical processes don't go to completion. They reach a dynamic equilibrium. So for example, here I have a gas jar with some bromine in the bottom. And assuming that the gas jar is a closed system, i.e. it's sealed, then we're going to see that bromine evaporates to form bromine gas and the gas condenses back to form the liquid. It's a reversible process. Similarly, if I were to place a, a strip of copper metal into a solution of copper sulfate or copper chloride, if we had a good enough microscope, we would be able to see that copper atoms are going into solution and copper ions are moving from solution back onto our strip of copper. With a dynamic equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the back reaction. So to all intents and purposes, we're not going to see any change. We're not going to see our solution becoming more or less concentrated. The concentration of copper ions in our solution is going to remain the same. Now, by the late 1880s, Henri Le Chatelier had studied enough equilibrium reactions to come up with his very own principle. And he stated that when an external change is made to a system in dynamic equilibrium, the system responds to minimize the effect of the change. By external change, we're talking about changing conditions such as the temperature, the pressure, if we have gases involved in our reaction, and if we have solutions involved, the concentration. We need to be clear that we cannot change the concentration of a pure liquid or a solid. I can have more or less solid, more or less copper in my solution, but I can't have more concentrated solid copper. Let's consider how changing the concentration of one of the components in a system will affect the equilibrium. The reaction we're going to look at is that between iron 3 ions, which have a yellowish colour, thiocyanate ions, which are colourless, and they react together to form an iron thiocyanate complex, which has got a deep red colour. And we can estimate the concentration of the iron thiocyanate ions by how deep red the colour is. So if we add some Fe3 plus to some SCN and we allow the reaction to come to equilibrium, when it's at equilibrium, the rate of the forward and the back reaction will be equal, which means that the concentrations of the three components of my system are going to be, remain constant. They won't be equal necessarily, but they will remain constant. So what happens if I add more Fe3 plus to my reaction mixture? which is effectively increasing the concentration of Fe3+. Well, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system, which is our reaction mixture, is going to work to minimize the effects of this change or to oppose this change. In everyday language, what does that mean? It means that my reaction is going to do its level best to undo the change that I've just made. It's going to try and reduce the concentration of Fe3+. plus. We put it up, the system wants to put it down. How is it going to do that? Well, in order to decrease the concentration of Fe3+, plus, it needs to use it up. It can use it up by increasing the rate of the forward reaction so that more of the complex is formed. The mixture is going to look a much darker, deeper red. The official way of explaining this 
is to say that the position of equilibrium, so the position of equilibrium equals m is my shorthand for equilibrium, will shift to the right. to minimize the change that we have made. Once again, after a certain amount of time, a new position of equilibrium will be established. So a new possession or position of equilibrium is established in which we are going to have different concentrations of Fe3 plus SCN in the complex than we did before. If you're not 100% clear on what I mean by position of equilibrium, then you need to go back and watch the first video in this series on chemical equilibria. Next, I'm going to add to my reaction mixture a spatula full of ammonium chloride. Now, the chloride ions in my ammonium chloride will react with Fe3+, essentially removing them from the equilibrium system. So by adding ammonium chloride, I'm effectively reducing the concentration of Fe3+, in my equilibrium mixture. How is the system going to react? Well, it's going to try and undo that change. If I have lowered the concentration of Fe3+, then the reaction mixture is going to do its level best to put the concentration back up. And it can do that by increasing the rate of the back reaction so that more of the complex dissociates to form Fe3 plus and SCN. By doing this, it has essentially minimized the effect of adding the ammonium chloride. The color of my reaction mixture is going to become much paler. And we can say that in official language, the position of equilibrium has shifted to the left to oppose the change that we made. Let's move on to see how changing the pressure affects a system at equilibrium. Before we begin, we need to be really clear that the pressure of a gas is proportional to the amount of gas present. And in terms of amount of gas present, we can talk about the number of moles in our system or the number of molecules. It doesn't actually matter, but all the A-level um, exam mark schemes would prefer us to talk in terms of moles. So that's what we're going to do. In my gas syringe, I have placed some nitrogen and hydrogen. I've allowed the nitrogen and hydrogen to react to form ammonia. And after a certain amount of time, this reaction is going to come to equilibrium. The temperature remains constant. So what will happen if I push the plunger in? Well, pushing in the plunger is equivalent to increasing the pressure on my system. Now, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system is now going to move to minimize this change. It wants to undo the increase in pressure. It would like to decrease the pressure. How is it going to do that? Well, it can favor the reaction which results in fewer moles of gas in the syringe. Fewer moles of gas, lower pressure. Let's take a look at our reaction. On the reactant side, we have got, just balance my equation out, four moles of gas, one mole of nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen. On the product side, I have got two moles of gas. Now, clearly, two moles of gas take up far less space than four moles of gas. So if our system favors the forward reaction so that the position of equilibrium, position of equilibrium shifts to the right, to the side with fewer moles of gas, it will have effectively opposed our change to the side with fewer moles of gas. Now, when we are describing effects of concentration or pressure or temperature on equilibrium reactions in exams, 
We need to be really clear about the language. And these two bullet points are both crucial. We need to say which way the position of equilibrium shifts to the right and what's happening there to the side with fewer moles of gas. You need both parts to pick up the marks in an exam. And if I pull the plunger out, the opposite is going to happen. Position of equilibrium is going to shift to the left to the side with more moles of gas. I have Reduce the pressure by pulling the plunger out. The system's going to move to try and increase the pressure. And the only way it can do that is by favoring the reaction, which produces more moles of gas in that volume. So I now know that if I want to produce ammonia on an industrial scale, I need to increase the pressure in my system, in my reaction system, because not only will that increase the rate of the reaction, so I produce ammonia quicker. It also causes the position of equilibrium to shift to the right so that more ammonia is made. I have more ammonia in my reaction mixture. OK, moving on to have a look at temperature. This time, my gas syringe contains a mixture of nitrogen dioxide, which is a brown gas, and dinitrogen tetroxide, which is a colourless gas. I'm going to allow my system to come to equilibrium. And then I'm going to manipulate the temperature by placing my gas syringe firstly in a bowl of boiling water and then I'm going to place it in a bowl of iced water. So let's look at these two scenarios. How is changing the temperature going to affect the position of equilibrium? Well, we can't make a prediction without knowing whether the forward and back reactions are exothermic and endothermic, which is which. So let's start with that piece of information. Delta H for this reaction is minus 57 kilojoules per mole. Now, when you see the enthalpy change for reaction, it is always quoted for the forward reaction. And that's really important to appreciate because what it means is that the forward reaction produces heat. So the forward reaction is exothermic. And I'm going to write plus hot on the right hand side. If the forward reaction is exothermic, then the back reaction must be endothermic. So I'm going to write plus cold on the left hand side. This is going to help me figure out how the system is going to react when I change the temperature. So I place my sealed syringe firstly into boiling water. This is going to increase the temperature. Now remember Le Chatelier's principle tells us that our system is going to do everything it possibly can to undo our change. So it would like to move the position of equilibrium in the colder direction. Position of equilibrium is going to shift to the left in the endothermic direction. So we are going to move in this direction, which means there's going to be more nitrogen dioxide in my equilibrium mixture and the syringe is going to look a darker colour brown. So in terms of exam language, we're going to say increasing the temperature will cause position of equilibrium to shift or move to the left in the endothermic direction. And both of those two statements are absolutely key to getting the marks in the exam. You don't need to explain it in any more detail. So what will happen to my equilibrium mixture if I place my sealed syringe in some iced water? Well, clearly that's going to decrease the temperature. The system is going to move to minimize or oppose that change by shifting the position of equilibrium in the direction which produces more heat. I've cooled it down. The system wants to heat itself back up, which means that the position of equilibrium is going to shift to the right in the exothermic direction. Remember, we need two points 
to get the marks when we're explaining what's going to happen. What are we going to see? Well, we're going to see more dinitrogen tetroxide in our equilibrium mixture, which is colourless. So the colour of the gas mixture in my syringe is going to get paler. Now, industrially speaking, if I wanted to produce dinitrogen tetroxide, ideally, in order to speed up the forward reaction, I would want to place my reaction mixture at the lowest possible temperature, because that is the way that I am going to get the equilibrium mixture, or the position of equilibrium, to shift to the right. But with all these things, there's always a but, isn't there? There's always a catch. If I run my reaction at very low temperatures in order to shift position of equilibrium to the right, it's going to slow the rate of the reaction right down which means that I might make lots of nitrogen, dinitrogen tetroxide, but I'm going to make it so slowly, I'm never going to make any money out of the process. So there's always a compromise in the conditions. Ideally, we'd want it really cold, but not too cold, otherwise the reaction is going to go very, very slowly indeed. And finally, let's consider the use of a catalyst. Industrially, most reactions use catalysts. How would this affect the position of equilibrium for a reaction? Well, catalysts work by lowering the activation enthalpy to increase the rate of reaction. And we find that they will increase the rate of the forward reaction to exactly the same extent that they increase the rate of the back reaction. So they are not going to shift the position of equilibrium in one direction or the other. But using a catalyst will allow us to achieve equilibrium more quickly, which of course usually means that we are also going to be able to lower our energy costs when we're running reactions on an industrial scale. So catalysts do not change the position of equilibrium. They just allow us to um, reach equilibrium more quickly. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it will take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School, where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together, we can do this.